Hey everyone, this is Josh Vision, and I'm here to give my Season 1, Episode 3, review of Piggy Blinders. So in this episode, we start off with Freddy and Ada getting married, and Aunt Pole basically um, trying to use money. I forgot the actual amount of money she actually had on her, but it was a great amount to basically have them leave you know, town, or at least Freddy leave town. But Freddy wasn't having it. We already know throughout this, um, so far, the past three episodes. Freddy is someone who's very devoted to his cause. And he's not about to bend to anybody. Not even the Shelby family. So, when, um, when Shelby, when Thomas Shelby finds out about this. Um, he kind of finds, he kind of finds out about this in a very interesting way. He's basically sitting down somewhere and Freddy has a gun pointed at him. So while this whole thing is going on, basically um, this whole Monty model thing between Freddy and Thomas, we see that um, Ada is basically rushing the bar. She's visibly pregnant at this point. And she's trying to find um, Tommy and her husband because she feels oh, um, they're about to kill each other. So she sort of reveals a little bit of information to Grace. As we know, Grace is basically like a double agent as she's working for um, Chief Inspector um, Campbell, but you could tell, obviously, especially from last episode, that she's starting to gain a lot of feelings for Tommy. So let's get back to Tommy and Freddy. So basically, Tommy's able to kick the gun out of Freddy's um, hand and basically have him at gunpoint. So he says the only reason why Freddy wants to marry his sister is basically for all the power and prestige and ammunition that will come, you know, with the shell being aligned and married into the Shelby name. You know, especially when it comes to his glorious revolution, his communist ideals, and all that stuff. You know, basically the same thing he was saying in the previous episode. And Freddy's like, come on, man. That's absolute bull, man. You can't believe that. You know that I always liked your sister since she was nine and I was 12. And that he actually does love her. And that there's nothing that, you know, Tommy can do about it. And if he wants to do anything about it, he has to kill him right, right then and there. So, Tommy has a chance. He has a choice. And Tommy pulls the gun away. He's like, you know what? I'm not going to allow this marriage to happen. You know? So, in regards to that, we have nothing that's interesting in this episode. So, despite the fact that Tommy's trying to keep the fact that he has the guns secret from everybody, it's starting to spread around town. His brother, um, Arthur, finds out about it basically through word of mouth. And he sort of goes off on Tommy about that when he's in the church. And he's also pissed off by the fact that Ada, um, that, you know, that Ada got married without his knowledge about it. And that Tommy told him about that either. And Tommy was saying, listen, man, I'm sorry about um, Ada and I'm also sorry about the guns. But, you know, you out of everybody have really been dealing with the ramifications of the war really badly. So I wanted to basically get that off your plate. You have so much, so many stuff already on your plate. So to make it up to him, he basically um, gives him the bar, gives him a bar at which he can own, essentially. Because that's the one thing that Arthur said he wanted to do after the war was buy his own pub. So that keeps, that's what it makes Arthur happy again. So besides that, um, Tommy gets blackmailed by one of um, the sergeant police officers under Chief Campbell. And basically, he gives Tommy an ultimatum. We're aware of the fact that your sister, you know, is in some way or form aligned with um, Freddie Thorne. Marriage and all that, blah, blah, blah. You know, she may be in cahoots with his communist ideals. And if I remember correctly, also in this episode, early episode, um, two members of the IRA actually showed up to um, the Shelby's uh, bar. And they threatened them and kind of said to them, listen, we know, or at least to Tommy, we know you have the guns, Okay. We know you have the guns. So Grace follows one of the men. One of the men catches her, and in self-defense, Grace kills him, shoots him dead. So that kind of connects to this scene, I guess, because if I remember correctly, I believe the guy thought that one of the Peaky Blinders, as well as other people, was connected to the shooting or Freddie Thorne or whatever. So he was kind of using that as another reason for Shelby, well, to basically blackmail Tommy. Seems like Tommy's been getting blackmailed this entire episode, honestly. So, that's very interesting because that same sergeant also mentioned the fact to um, Chief Inspector Campbell that he felt that 
um, his spy, you know, his little double agent, Grace, was the one responsible for it because someone mentioned to him um, a very accurate description of what Grace actually looks like, so on and so forth. But the but the Inspector Campbell basically tried to cover up for her, you know, basically. So, besides that, the main goal <clears throat> of Tommy in this episode, like in the previous episodes, basically get to, um, is basically to get within um, Billy Kimber's ranks, or at least to be part of some type of, a, of alliance. So, that was the main reason for him going to um, the fair to begin with. Basically, to gain his good graces and or to distract him, because... Him and his brothers know that the that the Lee family have been taking advantage of the Kimbers, you know, um, basically um, hired bodyguards and paying them off, the bookies, so on and so forth. And if they aren't able to buy them off, they beat the hell out of them. So basically, in this episode, while Tommy and Grace is at the fair, whining and dining with you know Kimber, so on and so forth, um, Arthur, Johnny, and the rest of the crew make short work basically of the Lees over. You know, I believe near the fair, if I remember correctly. And Arthur and Johnny put a beating on one of the guys, like a severe beating, and took all the money. And basically said, "Listen, we're doing this in part of our, you know, of our group, and basically stop screwing with Kimber's money and his operations." So that was basically the end of that little storyline over there. To the end of the episode, we have Tommy. You know, basically offering up Grace as a prostitute to Kimber. And the only reason why he did that because Kimber said, listen, if you offer her up to me, then I will definitely let you into the fold and form this alliance. So Tommy lets him do it. But near the end of the episode, this is very important, he eventually comes back and makes up some ridiculous lie that she had the clap, a.k.a. syphilis. So Kimber, obviously, once he hears that, he's like, oh, oh, never mind, dude. You know what? You could have her. Well, we're good, though, okay? Thank you for telling me, you know? You're definitely trustworthy. So, we end the episode with Grace being pissed off at the fact that he even offered her, uh, that he even offered her up in the first place as a whore, but also really thankful and kind of curious why he came back in the first place. And then we see him sort of staring off in the distance as he drives off, you know, with Grace looking at him. So, yeah, that's basically, you know, the gist of the episode, you guys. I really like this episode. I'll give this episode, like, a... 8.5 out of 10. Write your comments down below in the comment section, especially if I missed anything of great importance in this episode. If I did, I'm sorry. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Adios.